a growing question inside the spiritual community is if unity consciousness is a trap. So today I'm going to be explaining why people think that unity consciousness can lead to a deceptive hive mind mentality. In my video, Entering Unity Consciousness, I talk about how even the state of oneness has to it a shadow side. When we typically think that unity consciousness is a trap, that means two things. One, we haven't ever experienced oneness or unity consciousness. So even though our development and our spiritual awakening journey has reached a certain degree of unfoldment, we still have not reached the level of consciousness yet where we can actually experience oneness and therefore the state of unity consciousness for ourselves. That's why a person would fear it because they would only know how to relate to this state or what this thing is being talked about called oneness from a state of either obscurity, we're not familiar with it, it's vague, it's obscure to us, or if we're exceptionally far away from this state, it's very common for us to relate to it through fear. And the more fear we have or confusion around oneness, it's easy for us to slip into the notion that oneness and therefore unity consciousness is just a trap. When in reality, oneness has a shadow side to it. So when people are typically thinking that unity consciousness is strictly just a hive mind mentality, they're only being able to recognize and perceive the negative side, the shadow side of oneness. And that's because once again, they have not experienced that state for themselves. A person can talk all day long about enlightenment, about oneness, about unity consciousness, but if we haven't experienced something for ourselves, we will always be able to just reach for a concept. And there is nothing wrong with that. That is how we absorb information. That is how we absorb knowledge until it awakens within our own being for ourselves. So there's nothing wrong with hearing about something. Okay. People have all sorts of blocks in the spiritual community. They have all sorts of ways that they either are blocking themselves from knowledge or they're not allowing themselves to be able to receive something that could be beneficial because they're not being able to understand the nuance that is applied to knowledge. And the nuance that is being applied to knowledge is, is that it's not wrong to hear about something before we experience it ourselves. But we must eventually experience something for ourselves in order to step into our sovereignty. Did you see how both of those can exist at once? So it's all right if people are only first hearing about this concept of oneness. The issue is if they're only interpreting or only being able to recognize or perceive the negative shadow side to oneness. Now let's focus on that. So what is the negative shadow side to oneness? It is a hive mind mentality. That's why this is an absolutely fair question for people to be asking when they're trying to figure out exactly what unity consciousness means. It's completely fair because if you're in this reality and you're paying attention, chances are you're going to come up against the duality that's embedded inside it. And so we will start to notice that there is an exalted or a beneficial form of a concept, an attribute, an emotional state, anything, as well as its counterpart, as well as its detrimental expression. And when we can only see the detrimental expression of something, the negative side to something, and we cannot see the positive side to something, we can end up losing our own ability for clarity or lose our own ability for discernment because discernment is how we will be able to accurately perceive different grades of quality. And so discernment is very vital even for this concept, exceptionally for this concept of oneness, because within it, we could get lost in the sauce and only see that there is this hive mind mentality of oneness and therefore have a complete aversion to that concept, to that state. 
We can have so much repulsion. We can be repelled by it so much that then we think that higher states of consciousness is just all a new age deception. When in reality, higher states of consciousness is why we're here. We're here to evolve. E evolution means experiencing higher states of consciousness. And higher states of consciousness mean that we're able to experience for ourselves, perceive for ourselves, this state of oneness. Why is that important? Because it's the truth of who we are. Now, when it comes to the shadow side of oneness, once again, one of the strongest ways to learn about anything is by also learning about it through what it is not, through the negation of it. There's a whole branch of logic specifically dedicated for learning about a concept through what it is not, because that helps us understand something just as much as learning about something directly helps us understand something. So when it comes to the shadow side of oneness, what we're learning about it is what it is not. So we're learning about what oneness is by what is the opposite of oneness. And what is the opposite of oneness or what is the duality, the negative side of oneness that is embedded within unity consciousness or within oneness. And that would be being absorbed into a singularity. That's why it's okay that people are scared of this if they haven't experienced it themselves, because that would be freaking scary. And so what is the biggest fear around entering the state of unity consciousness is giving up our sovereignty, is being afraid that it's not going to lead to sovereignty and that higher states of consciousness is a trap because it's actually being absorbed into some form of singularity rather than being able to maintain our sovereignty and maintain our unique perception. So instead of becoming a more empowered version of ourselves and a more clear and discerning version of ourselves, we think that our individuation and our unique expression of self is threatened by going into higher states of consciousness because those higher states of consciousness would lead into demolishing anything unique, anything that's in, intrinsic to us, and then just get absorbed into a form of oneness that is very juvenile. It's a form of oneness that would really thrive inside a setting of complete political correctness. It's not allowed to have its own disagreements. It's not allowed to have its own unique perceptions. It's not allowed to have its own nature. That would be the hive mind mentality of the shadow side of oneness. That is not unity consciousness. That is not true oneness. That's simply the shadow side. And so within that state, then there's this fear of that being the new case, the, the, the new age deception or the new way that reality and the collective is now operating from. It's operating from this collective hive mind that you're not allowed to have your own thoughts and opinions. You're not allowed to have your own way of being and your own values and that everything just gets put into this like spiritual communism. Sorry, communists. Love you. I don't think they heard what I was saying. So the spiritual communism where everything is not differentiated, it's all the same, and everyone is supposed to just adhere to this false sense of true oneness. So that's why the fear of oneness comes into a person's reality. It's because they start perceiving that all of these higher states of consciousness that are being talked about is simply a trap. When in reality, it's not like if you're going into higher states of consciousness that you're not going to go through transformations. You will go through many transformations. When you are going into genuine oneness and genuine unity consciousness, that doesn't mean you keep all of your thoughts and opinions either. That doesn't even mean that you keep all of your disagreements because who's to say that when you're going through transformations, you won't start 
evolving. So what I'm trying to point out here is, is that, yeah, you don't get to keep everything when you're going into higher states of consciousness. And why would you? There's a point to evolution. Evolution means change. So a lot of the times when people are fearing higher states of consciousness, it's because they're an asshole. I'm serious. They're actually in a very base level of consciousness. And what they're fearing is having to give up a lot of their judgments and prejudices. And then they're relating all of that oneness and higher states of consciousness from that viewpoint. So can you see how at that level of consciousness and that much egoic attachment to self, how you would only be able to perceive the shadow side of oneness. You would not be able at all to perceive that there's also a correct form of oneness. One that we know as Christ consciousness or unity consciousness. And then we would start to repel that because our ego now has affirmed and convinced itself that, yeah, you would have to change and that's bad. Change is inevitable if a person is going through a spiritual awakening. The question is, is that a positive transformation or is that a detrimental trap? That's why I'm trying to point out to give us all discernment as to how, yeah, you would have to change. I'm not gonna even pretend that you wouldn't. If you're going through a transformation, everyone does. But that's also the point of spiritual evolution. It's just to make sure that we maintain our sovereignty and discernment as we do so. And what you will notice is, is that when you are genuinely going through a spiritual awakening, you start reaching such a level of clarity and discernment, eventually, that you can navigate oneness and you are able to perceive the manipulations and perceive the organic qualities of these concepts because you have discernment. And so when you're going into unity consciousness, you wouldn't have to worry about spiritual sovereignty being at threat because you're actually stepping into spiritual sovereignty. See, sovereignty and unity coexist beautifully in unity consciousness. They're not in opposition. And I know they sound like they're in opposition because you're like, wait, sovereignty is inner authority. That's the opposite of unity. But in reality, unity consciousness is not in conflict with spiritual sovereignty. What you will find out is, is that you need to become your own inner authority. You need to become spiritually sovereign in order to even enter into unity consciousness. So what is the connection between spiritual sovereignty and unity consciousness or oneness? Sovereignty means you are the creator and the created. You are the fractal and the source of the fractal. Spiritual sovereignty means you recognize that you are eternal and infinite. And when you step into this level of consciousness, then you also acknowledge that all others are the creator, that everything is source just in different layers of sleep. That is oneness. So they are dependent on one another. Sovereignty is also recognizing that unity. This is true unity. Recognizing ourselves as sovereign is also recognizing all other beings as sovereign and therefore recognizing that we are all unique expressions, which is why sovereignty even would need to exist in the first place. Sovereignty would not need to exist if there were no separate and different and completely unique expressions of being. Instead, there would be no need for spiritual sovereignty because we would be in a realm of true undifferentiated oneness a primordial state before the all was separated into being and non-being, active and passive. There is no need for the concept of spiritual sovereignty in this state because there is no I. This state of undifferentiation would actually be that thing that we're calling the singularity, but its name in mysticism is called the monad. But many are not even close to this state on their journey. And those who would reach it are doing so intentionally, not by accident and not because they were tricked. They are doing it intentionally 
through rigorous inner work because they wish to attain that level of oneness by dissolving their essence into moksha. So oneness does not mean that we are all the same. Oneness means that we are all the creator. So they're not opposed to each other. They're in harmony and even contingent upon one each other. Because in order to enter these higher states of consciousness, already that's showing that there's been a release from the hive mind mentality that's already going on and going inward into the inner authority of self. And once you have that inner authority of self that is gained only through a spiritual awakening that has reached a certain level, then you're able to perceive the external from that place of clarity. So they're actually not in opposition to one another because the inward expression of authority means that when you're entering into those higher states of consciousness, what you're really doing is you're able to see the external world through that level of love that you have embodied inside yourself. So the funniest part about people fearing a hive mind being unity consciousness is, is that we're in a hive mind mentality already, whether we think it or not, whether we know it or not, we're already in a hive mind mentality if we're not going through that level of awakening. So we're actually, when we're thinking that unity consciousness is a trap or oneness is a trap, we're actually so far away from these higher states of consciousness that we can't even see that we're dependent in our current level of reality inside some form of hive mind. And only a person's sincerity will be able to reveal that to them. So it's very important for us to perceive where, how we're fearing and projecting this hive mind mentality is upon something that actually is pointing to us already being in some form or another of a hive mind mentality where we don't have our own individual and inner authoritative thoughts and belief systems. But once we pull back from all the different, very seductive ways that we could enter hive mind mentality here, we can start genuinely building that inner I within that sovereignty so that then when we naturally come into that level of consciousness or that level of love, because love is consciousness, what now we're seeing the world through in the external is that level of external love reflected to us as within, so without. So that's why when we're entering genuine unity consciousness, we're not afraid of there being a hive mind mentality because we're sovereign. And that's how you know that we're in that state in the first place. And when we're afraid of oneness and unity consciousness, that's how you know that you don't have that level of love, AKA that level of self inner authority, spiritual sovereignty. So it would only lead to you seeing the fearful expression of it. I hope this has clarified the duality in singularity. Make sure to subscribe to my channel for higher dimensional guidance through spiritual awakening. See you next time.